What's up guys, my name is Richard Taylor and you are watching Hold My Hand Wholesale, the all incorporated wholesale real estate YouTube channel where I teach you how to build your real estate empire through wholesaling real estate. Now, today we have an extremely exciting call to review and sort of a ninja strategy I pitched a novation agreement for one of the first times to a seller and I want you guys to tell me how you think I did. This is a creative finance strategy that allows you to fix and flip a property without actually owning it. I'm going to show you guys what happened throughout this entire conversation with the seller and hopefully break down start to finish why I felt I needed to pitch this novation agreement and I think the phone call is gonna be a great window rather than me explaining it. So let me just play it and then you guys can watch along. Tell me how I did in the comments. Hello? Christine, it's Richard Taylor, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, we spoke about, I wanna say two and a half, three weeks ago about your property on Harvard Avenue. And I was just going up to see where your head's at and um, really how everything is going yeah i really um i'm not in a position to move at this time that's really what i'm what it is and and um you know what i owe on the house as compared to what the house is probably worth is very close so I so before she gets to explain her position i want to tell you guys what she means when she says that the amount that she owes on the property is very close to the actual value of the property. In real estate, this is what we call low equity. It means that the amount that she owes on her mortgage is pretty much the amount that the house is worth, and it makes it difficult to make a cash offer on these properties because the mortgage is often more than what the property works, is worth, so we have to come up with another solution. And guys, the key here is listening to the seller and understanding their situation. Also, if you guys continue to educate yourself on creative real estate strategies, you'll have an arsenal of techniques that you can use to help sellers get to the finish line when it comes to getting their property sold. I, I just don't see this really working at this time. Right, wow. right. I totally understand that. Christine, I learned something extremely interesting from one of my mentors who it, I sort of brought the situation to him and I said, I have a seller who has a, a great property, but I, what she owes is close to what it's worth. So it doesn't really make sense for us to give her a cash offer on it because it really won't leave her in a better position than where she is right now. And he told me about a sort of agreement called a novation agreement. Now, a novation agreement means that I would partner on with you in rehabbing the property. So I would come in while you're still living in it with my team, turn a new coat of paint, you know, put in some new appliances, new fridge, which would then make your house worth more than what you all want it now. So let's say it's worth 100 now. If I put in new floors, new paint, and, and update the kitchen a little bit, it'll be worth 150. Now that may cost me $25,000, and if I did that, while well, you still own the property, we could then increase the value of your property to 150. And I. So, guys, she currently has a property worth 100 and she owes 100. So, what we can do is actually not buy the house, but rather fix up the interior of the property and make the exterior look super nice. And now we've forced appreciation on the property. So it was worth 100, we put in 25,000 new floors, new kitchen, new appliances, new siding, new paint, all of that, $25,000, and it actually makes the house worth 170,000. Now I said it was worth 150,000, but then again, then I go check the comps and I see, hey, this could actually sell for 170,000 in updated condition, which means we can actually give the seller more. So we go in there, we update the property, make it worth 170, we sell it to an end buyer or another investor, and then we pay the seller what we originally agreed upon, which is actually over market value. So during the last couple months that the seller lives in her house, we rehab it and make it beautiful for her, and then we sell it as a team, and she gets what she agreed upon, and my payment for rehabbing the property is simply anything above that. So if we agree on 125 and the property's worth 100, I would make anything above that. So if the, the end buyer buys it at 175,000, I would make $50,000. Does that make sense, guys? 
let me know in the comments if that makes sense or if you guys need a further explanation on that. But I'm gonna keep playing this video where, or this recording where I sort of explain this in depth to the seller. I use a great metaphor with the car that's about to come up. I would do all of that rehab out of my own pocket. And what we could then do is sell your property, give you 125,000, which would pay off your mortgage and give you cash in your pocket. And then the way that my company would make money is by making anything over what we sold it for. So we sell it for 150, do the rehab for free while you still own it. And then we only have to sell it once and that actually allows us to pay a lot more so we could even go over 125 we could go up to like 135 because we don't have to pay closing costs on the property if i were to buy your property right now i would have to pay about six to seven percent of that in closing costs which is kind of unfortunate my mentor was saying you know you can just do the work for free while a seller still lives in the property and then you can sell the property because of the appreciation that was added to the house and then you can actually pay the seller, you in this case, more than what it's worth in current condition. But I thought I'd bring it up to you and just see what your thoughts are on that. I've never heard of that. What is it called again? It is called a novation agreement and it is it is a wizard flipping technique. I mean, this is just uh, really blew my mind when he told me about it because previously, in order to rehab somebody's house, we have to buy it, but why can't we just go in and get nicer while they own it? So let me put it this way. Let's say you have a car and I come to you and I say, hey, I'd like to buy your car. And you say, well, I use my car to commute and get to work. So if I were to sell my car, I would have to get myself into a better situation than I'm already in. So say the car for 5,000 and you would have to sell it for 8,000 in order to get yourself into a better situation. So I could come to you and I could say, Christine, what if I put new wheels on your car? What if I put new paint on your car? And what if I make the engine a little bit better? And you say, okay, well, I'm still driving it, so all that sounds good to me. I just get a nicer car for the time being. And then I say, okay, well, I'll do all of that for free, but your car's gonna be worth $10,000 after I put all these updates on it. And I can sell the car for $10,000 while you still own it as my partner. And then you could get your 8,000, which is 3,000 than what it's worth now, 3,000 more than what it's worth now. And you could get the time using your car to be much better than it was because I would put new paint, new wheels, and make the engine a little bit nicer. So it allows us to update the, the car that the seller has and then sell it for the value that it is worth after we put the updates into it. So I can actually start paying people more than their properties are worth and start beating out all of the other buyers by just updating the current property that they're in. So guys, I'm going to make this real simple. Let's say you guys have a car and your car's worth $2,000. I come to you and I say, hey, can I buy your car? And you say, I bought it for 2,000. I wouldn't sell it unless I got 4,000 because I use this car every day. I say, great, I can give you $4,000, but I wanna update the car first, new paint, new seats, new engine, and um, I also wanna give it new wheels. Now the car is worth $8,000. You guys said that you wanted $4,000 for the car, but the car is now worth $8,000. I sell the car for $8,000, I give you your $4,000, and $4,000 is profited to me because I updated the car. However, my update expenses are going to come out of that $4,000, so my profit actually looks a little bit more like $2,500. Does that make sense, guys? When we do this with a house, the profit is tens of thousands, if not multiple six figures. I'm just in a market like Cleveland where the values are pretty low. You hear me throwing out numbers like 125, 150. If I were in Atlanta, this would be a lot bigger deal, guys. So this is one of the first time I pitched it, but you know, it's going very well up to this point. And if you guys listened in the beginning, you'll hear that the seller said, you know, I just don't think this is going to work. It's just not making sense to me. I don't know if I can sell right now. We turn that around, guys. I want you guys to be able to do that too. And then selling it and moving them into a new residence. So it's a technique that I'm pitching to all of my sellers now because it's so much better than a cash offer because I can, I can make your current place nicer. You can live in it for a while. And then when you're ready to sell, we can just decide to pull the trigger and you can cash out way more than any other buyer would be able to give you. Yeah, I let me look into this. I'm just not sure because it's the first time I've heard anything about it. Me too. So, me. Yeah. So let me kind of look into this and see what I think about that. And um, I don't know, maybe I could talk to you in another week or so. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Christine, we don't have we don't have any like formal plans to do this right now. I just wanted to let you know that it's an option because it, it's a win win. I mean, we get to I get to get my team to do a job, and I get to pay them and, and put food on their tables, and then I get to make money for my company in addition to giving a seller uh, what their house is more than what their house is worth and as is condition. Um, but I will tell you, Christine, it's going to be unlikely that you're going to find a whole lot of information about novation agreements because of how much of a, let's call it ninja strategy it is. You know, I had to really dig deep to learn this strategy because I had never heard of it before. And it's simply called a novation agreement, but feel free to look up novation agreement and it will outline all of this. Um, I just don't think you're gonna find a whole lot of information on novation agreements just because it's sort of a rare technique. Right, so, um... So then how would that work if if I'm paying somebody now for the mortgage and then we did some novation agreement thing, then yeah, I would change to be paying your company for the mortgage? No, not at all. Not at all. You have a current mortgage on your property, which you're... So guys, the issue here, the, the call almost ended right here, but we dug a little bit deeper and it turns out she didn't really understand what I said. So you have to really reiterate in the seller's mind what you're trying to explain to them to make sure that they don't think you're trying to get them into some sort of scammy situation. What she said right there was really scary. I don't want her to make payments to me, guys. I want to pay her for her property and I want to pay her more than it's worth and I want to update the property while she's living in it. So guys, it's really important that we explain exactly what we mean so that these sellers don't get these really bad assumptions about what we're trying to do and as a result, uh, so that we don't put a bad name on wholesalers in the United States. They're currently paying off. Now, the mortgage is for the property in its current condition. So let's say, I don't, I don't know the true information of your mortgage, but let's say just for round numbers, your house is worth 100 and your mortgage is 100. If I put $25,000 of up dates into your house, that house is now gonna be worth 150. That means I can pay you $125,000, right? And that will pay off your mortgage, put 25 into your pocket, and then anything above the $125,000 is payment to my company, meaning that you wouldn't have to pay us anything. You're current. So guys, I'm gonna go in and do the rehab for free. She's living in the house and I'm like, let me make it nicer. Okay, let me, let me just make your house nicer. It won't cost you anything. No sort of estimates, nothing like that. I'm just gonna go in and make it look nicer. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. Because it's not gonna cost her anything. And then when it's time to sell, we pay her out. No problem. How are you living in your house? My crew comes in, makes it beautiful for the last couple months you live in there. And then we sell the house, pay off your mortgage in full and put $25,000, $35,000 in your pocket. And then my company is paid based off of what the property sells for above what we put in your pocket. Does that make sense? It does. Have you looked at what the properties in my area are? Guys, it does. Did you hear that? She says, it does. I love the way she said that. It's like a, it, it just rings, it rolls off of her tongue. She says, it does. And then she says, have you looked at the properties in my area? Why, why does she say that? Because she knows how much she makes off the property is dependent on how much the houses in her area are selling for. I found out they can sell for 170,000, which means I could give her like $135,000, even though it's only worth 100,000. Do you see how awesome this is? It does. Have you looked at what the properties in my area are selling for? I haven't. I haven't looked at all these, which is why I don't have a formal plan to actually make this happen right now. I just mm. wanted to you to see if it was something that sounded appealing and then I can find out what your house actually would be worth after I put 25k into it I mean we can partner on this and you can say hey Richard I've always thought that my house would look better with this color cabinets and so guys in order to get her to agree to this we're also gonna say something that you know sounds interesting to her that she could have input on the rehab while not actually having to pay for any of the rehab costs She's talked about doing updates to the house in the past, so let's make her vision a reality. And that these buyers in this area would like this. So we'll make it the reality of the interior of your property. You'll get to stay in it for a while, and then we can sell it for more and pay you more than what it's worth. But I would have to find out what exactly it could sell for, because right now it's worth about 100, so the cash offer's not gonna work. 
But if we were to partner on this and, and say update the property together, not not literally together, I don't I don't think you need to move any any paint cans. But um, if we were to partner on this and you were to allow us to, you know, then then the property would be worth more, and uh, we we could sell it for a profit while still paying you way more than what the house is worth. But I would need to find out exactly what it would sell for to see how much more we could give you over. But I think you know, 125, 135 is definitely within the realm of possibilities, especially if we do a killer update on the property together in, in, in your image, of course. Okay. Well, yeah, give me a little bit of time to think about this yeah, and yeah, research absolutely. that. And, um, and uh, yeah, let's go from there. Maybe during, in the meantime, you can check and see how much the properties in my area are selling for, and yeah. uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, awesome. Well, uh, I want to thank you for being so receptive to all this new information, Christine. A lot of the sellers we try to talk to about this are just like, hey, I've never heard of this before, uh, but but I'm glad that you're open to, to learning. Oh, yeah, I don't want to rule anything out, but also I want to make sure that I know what I'm talking hey, about or what I'm doing. So, I don't want yeah. 2008 sort of sketchy mortgage situation where you owe money to a company that you don't really know and it becomes a whole hassle. We don't want to get you into anything like that. Right. So, you know, that's actually how I ended up getting... I probably already told you that. I ended up getting in this position where I've had my house for 25 years and I still, and I owe actually twice as much as what I originally signed for. But, um, yeah, you know, I was uh, I was trying to do upgrades on the house and stuff like that. And I landed in a five-year balloon loan that I had to get out of just right around 2009. And, you know, and right then everything was crashing in on the whole... Um, mortgage thing, you know, and oh, I was right in the middle of that. So um, that's really how I got there here. <laughs> and um, yeah, a creative financing is something that I really need to research before I even think about much. This is not creative finance. Technically, this is just a novation agreement. So there's mm -hmm. no and there's no payments involved with it. All it is is us making your house worth more selling it and then giving you way more than we could before. Essentially, you just become our partners on the flip. We have the capital and experience to update the property, but you have the actual asset, the property. So we partner on it, give you more than it's worth, and then we can take anything above that, come to an agreement that makes it so you can get into a better situation because it, it's not fair that the banks were able to grant all of these mortgages, bundle them up and disguise them as other things, and then just sort of back out and leave the people like you holding the back. So my my company's goal is to sort of relieve that pain that the banks have dropped on you guys. And the way to do it, from what I've been told, is forced appreciation. So make the house worth more and then get out of the mortgage because you can sell it for more than it's worth right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time, Richard. And um, yeah, I'm willing to talk about it again. I just going to need a little bit of time on this. Oh. Oh yeah, I, I we I think I, I we spoke last two weeks ago. I'll give you another two weeks. We'll just play it by ear. No commitments, nothing like that. We're just talking at this point. Thank you, Richard. Okay, I'll right. hear we'll from me again. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Guys, you see how she became my friend throughout that entire phone call? She initially didn't want to sell, and we turned her mind around and explained to her that she can sell if we just do it a little bit differently. Anyways, guys, we're all trying to help the sellers. We're not trying to cause any issues with them. So let's stop taking equity away from the sellers and let's start adding value to their houses and paying them as much as we possibly can. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Hold My Hand Wholesale. My name is Richard Taylor, and if you are not subscribed, please subscribe. It would really, really help grow this channel. Also, make sure to like it. I am a very small YouTube channel, and I'm trying to grow this, but thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one.